The Eagle of the Khan Once upon a time, there was a mighty king and warrior by the name of Genghis Khan. He was a brutal man who stormed across the land, conquering everything in his path. He was the ruler of the Mongol Empire, an army of horsemen who defeated every other army they came across. They were strong and tough and deadly and none more so than Genghis Khan himself. The temper of Genghis was legendary. No one dared to offend him, and people who did rarely lived to see another day. Even his closest companions and generals lived in fear of him. His anger was like the sea in the middle of a raging storm. His anger was the strike of lightning that started a raging forest fire. His anger was the keen edge sword, and no one wanted to be on the wrong side of it. One morning, between the wars and the battles, Genghis Khan was out in the woods hunting. He was safe in his own lands and hunting alone, accompanied only by his hunting eagle named Garrod. She was a proud bird, strong and swift as a spear, and it was said she was the Khan's only friend. Together, they ranged through the trees and over the cliffs and valleys. Genghis was on the ground, his deadly bow in his hands, an arrow knocked and ready. Garrod soared above, the wind buffeting her wings, her keen eyes alert for signs of a rabbit or deer. When she saw her prey, she would screech and dive. If it was a rabbit, she would take it herself, crashing down with her tearing talons. If it was a deer, she would swoop and circle, letting Genghis know where he needed to go with his bow. That day, they had found no deer or rabbits, so Genghis Khan's temper was dark and bristly as a boar. Bah, there's no hunting to be had, he muttered to himself. Enough of this, I'm going home. He turned and started making his way back through the forest. His horse was with his attendants a few long miles back, so he was walking for once. Usually, he would enjoy the hike, but with his temper already bad, he was just mad at the world in general. Pah, walking is for the weak, he said, kicking idly at rocks as he went. A man should be on a horse. He fought his way through the trees and came out on a winding ledge. To his left side, the ground sloped away in a wooded scree of shrubs and loose stone. To the right, there was a sheer cliff face that stretched up about thirty rocky feet. It was a wide, comfortable path, and Genghis walked it quickly. His eagle Garrod soared overhead in slow circles, still watching for deer and also keeping one eye on her master. No trees grew near the rocky cliff, and the sun beat down like a heavy fist. Genghis drained his canteen and kept walking, letting the sun wash over him, warming his deeply tan skin. No hunting, and now it's too hot, he grumbled to himself. Next time I'm bringing my horse and some servants and a whole keg of water. Genghis kept walking, the sun blazing down and heating up the rocky cliff to his side, baking him like an oven. His throat was soon dry and scratchy, and he was desperate for a drink. He shook his canteen, but only a single warm drop fell onto the rocks and sizzled away. Oh no, I need a drink or I might not make it home, he said. There's got to be something around here. He looked around for a minute and then spied some fresh water rolling down the face of the cliff. It wasn't much, barely even a trickle, but it was something. Aha, he said, pulling out a small cup from his hunting pack. High above him, his eagle cried out and spiraled down. Are you thirsty too? Come on down, he called up. He put the cup against the warm rock face of the cliff and watched the water gradually bead and trickle in. It was agonizingly slow, but after nearly a minute, the cup had a solid swallow of dusty water inside. Bottoms up, Genghis said. He raised the cup to his lips, 
And then there was a screech and a flash of feathers, and Garrod was there. The eagle knocked the cup from Genghis Khan's hand, and the water splashed into the dirt. Garrod, what's wrong with you? His anger flashed, but he smiled, too. The eagle was the only thing in the world that could avoid his mighty temper, even for a moment. Did you need some attention? Just let me take a drink, okay? We have another couple miles until we're home, and I'm very thirsty. The eagle screamed and launched back into the sky. Genghis shook his head and retrieved his cup. He wiped out the dirt and held it to the face of the cliff again. The tiny trickle of water burbled over the edge and pooled in the bottom of the cup. It was cloudy and warm, but the Khan's dry throat ached for it. He lifted the cup to his lips, and then Garrod was there again. The eagle dove like a falling arrow and knocked the cup from his grip. It clattered against the rocks and started to roll down the scrubby hill. Genghis had to dive and catch it by the handle so he wouldn't lose it in some jagged crack. He lay there for a moment, scuffed and sweating, and now he did lose his temper. You no good eagle, he shouted, his face turning bright red. I want a drink and I have no time for your games. If you keep this up, I'm going to stuff you with bread and roast you for dinner. Is that what you want, you lousy pigeon? Garrod looked at him, screeched once, and then she winged back to the sky. In a second, she was high overhead again, circling. Genghis watched her darkly. So bad was his temper that he briefly thought about taking a shot at her with his bow and arrow and only decided against it at the last minute. Lousy bird, he said, shaking his head. The Khan stood up and dusted himself off and then once more held his cup to the trickle at the cliff. The faint stream of water slowly rolled in, and after a minute he had another cloudy mouthful. Bottoms up, he said, pausing and looking for Garrod. I'm going to drink now, he said, still looking for the eagle. When he didn't spot her anywhere nearby, he raised the cups to his lips. No sooner had the metal met his mouth than the bird exploded at him from out of nowhere. This time, she grabbed the cup in her talons and pumped her wings, sending it flying down the hill. Genghis watched the cup disappear into a hole among the rocks on the ground and then clutched at Garrod. He managed to catch her in his hands and then he fell on top of her, driving her to the ground. What is wrong with you? he bellowed, inches from her wild eyes. His legendary temper was out in full force now, and his heart was hammering a heavy bum-bum-bum that filled him up and echoed in his ears. You were supposed to be my friend! I'm thirsty! You fool of a bird, I'll smash you to pieces! His hand found a rock, and he lifted it into the air. His other hand held the eagle down by her thick neck, she didn't scream or struggle, but he could feel the wild thump of her heartbeat in the hidden hollow of her body. Anger burning too hot to touch, Genghis Khan prepared to slam down the rock and end Garrod's life. And then he paused. There, at the base of the cliff where the trickle met the ground, was the body of a mouse. It was a tiny thing, and old and gray all curled up in a little ball. It was dead and frozen in a strange pose. To Genghis's expert eye, it didn't look like it had been simply sick or old. No, it looked like it had been... Poisoned? The Khan asked, his eyes going wide. Could it be? Genghis Khan was suddenly terribly ashamed of himself. He let the rock fall from his grip and lifted Garrod off the ground. He smoothed her feathers and fed her a piece of jerky from his pouch. She took it gratefully, though he could still feel her trembling on his arm. He stroked her gently, deep in thought. When she recovered enough to take back to the sky, Genghis walked a little further down the trail. Soon he found a spot he could climb, and still thirsty and raw, 
he hauled himself to the top of the cliff. There, he backtracked until he found the water trickle's source. It was a shallow stream, barely more than a trickle itself. It gathered into a little puddle at the edge of the cliff and dribbled over in tiny little bits when the wind blew right. And there, in the center of it all, was a giant dead adder, the most poisonous snake in all of his kingdom. Sand and stone, Genghis breathed, falling to his knees. That would have killed me. High above, Garrod shrieked and spun in a slow circle. The Khan lifted his arm, but the eagle came in for a cautious landing a dozen feet away. My friend, Genghis said, nearly in tears. You saved my life, and in my temper, I almost destroyed you. Quark, said Garrod, staring back at the Khan. My friend, I, I thought you were attacking me. I should have known you wouldn't try to hurt me. If you can forgive me, I promise to learn to control my temper. I almost lost you today, and I can't bear to think of it. He held out his arm. Garrod stared at it for a long moment, and then she chirped and flew to his fist, nuzzling him affectionately. Good, said the Khan. Now let's get back to the horses. The eagle cried again, and the two got a drink from upstream where the water was clean, and then made their way home. And from that day on, the Khan learned to control his temper and to think things through before he acted. It didn't happen overnight. It took a lot of practice, but he got much better at it. And Garrod was given free range of the kingdom, a gourmet meal every night, and all the rabbits she could ever hope to chase. The End Thanks for listening! Thank <laughs> you.